Hello, my name is Frank McKenna. I'm here at UC Berkeley, still working for the Near East Film Center. This is a short video showing you how to program using the message passing paradigm and MPI on a parallel computer. So what is the message passing model? The idea in this model is that we have processes that run independently, each in their own address space, i.e. they don't share any memory. And the processes communicate with each other when data needs to be shared. So here I have you know, two processes, each running on their own individual CPU. The yellow box is their memory, so they each have their own memory. And basically, they run through the computation. As shown in blue, they're just running through the computation. And when process 0, he sends information over to process 1, who receives it. Process 1 works on the data. Process zero does some more work. Again, there sends data that's received by process one. Um, they continue working. Then process one sends data needed by process zero. And then they both work independently until they're done. So basically, all we are doing is we're writing se sequential applications. And then we have additional functions calls to do the sending and receiving when we need to send information and receive information between the processes. Again, it's basic sequential C code with some send and receive messages in there, some send and receive function calls. And we only get speed up if the processes can be kept busy. The previous example, that program was, I was showing it, it would scale perfectly. Now we've got a problem. We have process one, he's doing some computation, and then he can't proceed until he gets the second bit of information from process zero. Process zero, you know, he sends the information, does a little bit more work, and then he's stuck waiting for information from process one before he can, can continue. So this is now where we're going to start losing performance. We're no, no longer going to get linear speed up. We have to wait for these processes to do the communication. So this is why we, they, we have to keep these processes busy. So how do we do the send and receive from a C, C program? There's a whole bunch of libraries that have existed um, that provide the send and receive interface. They've all coalesced around one. Pretty much everybody who does send and receive programming these days is using an interface called MPI that is now a standard. And there are a number of different libraries that you can get that actually implement that standard. So what does MPI provide? It provides some simple inquiry type functions, for example, how many processes are involved in the computation. It provides functions for communication, the send and receives, and it provides more sophisticated communication routines, um, broadcasting, scatter gather type operations. And then there's methods in the, the interface for synchronization between processes, which is sometimes needed. So we're about to show you your first MPI program. And just remember, all I'm showing you is Z code with function calls. So let's look at a low world. So here's my program. I start it up when I start typing. I include mpi.h. This is where these external functions reside in this mpi.h. And I'm including the typical standard IO. I have my int main int arg c char pointer pointer argv. I have my opening curly brace. And now I define two variables, nump and process id. Both these variables are integers. I then invoke this mpi function mpi init. Here I pass in arg c and arg v. Now we invoke two functions, mpi com size and mpi com rank. Size, we're going to send in the address of mp. So we want mp to be changed inside this function call. And in the com rank, we want process id variable to be changed. What mp, num mp is going to be, that's going to be the number of processes running in the computation. And process ID, each process in the computation will have its own unique ID. Next, we're going to print to the screen, hello world. And it's just going to be I am process ID of num processes. So we're just going to see each process is going to print out its unique ID and the total number of processes in the job. MPI finalized will now shut down MPI. We will return zero from our main function, and then we will exit the function. So that's hello world using MPI. Hopefully, I've pretty much given all the, the stuff here on the red. I haven't mentioned MPI com world. 
that's a default group container. When we run MPI, we're able to create groups of processes that communicate amongst each other and ignore the other groups. So that's but I'm just going to have every process communicating so everybody is part of the MPI com world group. So if I start the application and tell it to run four um, processes, this would be the state. I will have four processes, each running on its own CPU or core. You'll have each process will have its own address space. The address space is not shared. Each process has two variables inside it, numP and process ID. Each process, the numP will be equal to four, indicating that there are four other processes in the, the computation. And each process ID will be unique. One will be zero, one will be one, the next will be two, and the, other, the last will be three. As I say, each is unique, and you do notice the C indexing um, notation, 0 through n minus 1, where n in this case is 4. Now let me quickly demonstrate in terminal how to build and launch this job on Stampede 2. Okay, so here I am at a login node on Stampede 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is cd into SimCenter Bootcamp 2020. I will cd into code cd into parallel, and cd into MPI. If I look here, I have all the files I'm going to show in this presentation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start iDev. OK, now you see I'm on the compute node, a C node. If I do PWD, I'm in the same location. Let me just issue clear to get me back to the top. So to compile hello.c, it's MPI. Hello.c, we want to use the MPI compiler. We don't want to use a tip, the general C compiler. We want to use an MPI compiler. So to invoke the compiler, it's MPICC. Hello1.c. That we now we have a dot out. So to run a dot out, it is just mpi run minus n, n being the number of processes I want to start. Let's do four. And I'm going to say a dot out is the application name. So the application I'm going to run is mpi run, start four processes. And then this is the application to run on each node. So there we go. Run our job. And here is C. And there is the file I just did in the demonstration. I run it again, say with 10. Well, let's do, yeah, let's do 10. There we go. So that is done. So I will exit iDev. So that was Hello World. Now let us look at some actual sending of data and receiving data. So here is going to be our program. We include mpi.h, standard IO. We have an integer variable called process ID. We have another variable, status which is of type MPI status. I'll get to this in about two or three slides. For now, I'm just going to ignore it. Then we do an MPI init, and of course, we MPI communication rank. So what we're going to do here is we have two processes. Process 0 is going to send something to process 1, and process 1 is going to spit it out. So here is process ID. If process ID is equal to 0, we create an integer array of size 2. We put two numbers in it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Process ID 0 will invoke MPI send. It will put in the address of the, the array to send, the number of elements to send, the element type, and then it's going to send it to process ID 1. This is a tag that we're just going to always keep 0 for, for the exercises today, and then MPI communication world. Finally, on the other end, we have process ID equals to 1. He's going to sit there and receive data. Again, an integer array of size 2. MPI receive into that address of that buffer, or that array. Two integers, he's receiving from process ID 0. The tag again is 0, MPI com world. And then this status, the status we'll talk about again in two slides. And then process ID 1 will do the, print out the message that he received, and will show the two integers that he received, percent Ds. MPI finalize return 0. These are the different types we can send. When we're sending our own struct, um, we start playing with MPI byte, and we just send the size of the, the struct that we're going to send. 
MPI receive is, you know, we've pretty much seen it. The only thing that's kind of new is this MPI any tag, um, which kind of why I, would, I wanted to leave status till now. So MPI any tag is we can have a process receive, inf we can have a process receive data from any single process. And you find out who it is by looking at the, the status. Status, it's, there's information and in status about who you actually received the, the data from. So when we're doing malloc and free and um, new and delete, we always made sure we did things in pairs. Send and receive, it's not quite so simple. Um, it's a little bit obvious, but not so simple. So here I have a program. Process ID is zero. It's going to send something and then receive a buffer. Process ID one is also going to send his buffer and receive it. That's why we only had to create one integer array of size buffer and we could fill it both up so they could send the information and then receive the information in that same buffer. The problem with this is sometimes it will work and sometimes it will fail. Um, when, this is, when this is a large buffer, this sometimes works and sometimes fails. The reason is just the way um, we're getting deadlocked just because the buffers, these are sending data to buffers and the buffers are getting full and they won't receive or send anything until the other guy has emptied the information from the buffer. So the solution we have is to reorder the, the send and receive operations. So process zero can send and then receive. And then we'll redo what process one does. We'll have him receive and then send. For this to work now, we're going to have to rewrite the code that process one has. If you go back and look at the code, you'll see why you have to rewrite it. Now, collective message sending is very useful. You're going to use it in the exercise you do. The exercise you do today, you're going to be using MPI Gather. I suggest you use MPI Gather. So MPI Broadcast, we're sending one bit of information from process zero to everybody. MPI Scatter, we're sending a little bit of the information to every single process. Every single process receives the same amount of information, but it just it's just it just can be different. And collectively they all receive the whole thing. MPI gather again with every process is going to send to zero something and process zero will be able to put it all together. And the MPI all gather, they all have a little bit of information and then we just send it to everybody so everybody will have the information at the end at the end so here are the example files to do it so the broadcast in this case an array integer array of size 2 process id is going to put the information in remember he's the one who's going to send it out to everybody none of the others need to put the data in there initially and then they all it's not just process zero they all issue the call the function npi broadcast with their buffer, um, the size of the buffer, integer again, a tag, and MPI com world. And when they do this, they will all now have this information in this print. So they'll all print the exact same thing. Scatter. Um, in this case, they're all going, process zero is going to send the information to everybody. So in the code, we have a, each, everybody has this local data. And then global data is going to be equal to null. So global data is a pointer to an integer array. And the only one who needs to set up that integer array is process zero because he's going to basically put information in that array. So he mallocs the array and then puts information in it. And then he sends it to the MPI scatter. So they all invoke the function MPI scatter. And then they just spit out what they, what they received. And because process ID with zero malloc something, Process ID with zero has to free something. MPI gather, the one you guys are going to do. So we're doing calculating pi. Each of these processes is going to calculate some portion of pi. And then when you're done, you're going to send them all to process zero through an MPI gather function. So again, process zero has to do something special. He has to malloc the array that will hold all the information. And then each of the processes is going to put some information. We're going to put the information there. Then we're going to invoke the function MPI gather. And then process ID, in this case, is going to print out what it received. In your case, you're going to sum up the contributions from pi, spit it out, and then you're done. So MPI can be simple. Six options. 
you can add these four. You know, this these six or plus these four, that's ten functions, and you will be, you know, it'll serve ninety-five percent of your or maybe ninety-eight percent of your MPI requirements. So this is the exercise if you want to think about it um, before you see it in the class today. We've seen pi before, and all I want you to do is each each element does some little part of this pi contribution, and then they all send the, their result back to process zero.